Welcome to Roll Die for Adventure. Tonight, our GM is Scott. Take it away. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Haunted Logs of Return to the year 2045. And uh, tonight, uh, we've got a slight uh, mix-up with the in the crew. Uh, we have the triumphant return of Cavalry. Played by Jason. That's me. We have the triumphant return, uh, the semi-triumphant return of Jinx. Played by Allison. <laughs> I, I appreciate the semi-triumphant return. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you survived one or two adventures. <laughs> You've earned that rep. <laughs> and uh, we have with us a new character tonight, Mo, played by Nick. What's up, guys? Hey. And Nick has a shadow. Yes, he has a shadow. It's right, right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. That, that looks like special effects right there. <laughs> That's production value. Uh huh. <laughs> it's Peter. All right, Pan. and we have uh, behind the cameras. Uh, Shannon is producing for us tonight. Uh, thank you, Ms. Direction, very much. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, well, where we left off was uh, last year, <laughs> and in a, a somewhat uh, awkward transition. The group is currently in Las Vegas, not in Night City. And does anybody remember why you're in Vegas? <laughs> we were delivering something. Yeah, we 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 delivered a, yeah. a lead lined uh, box to uh, basically where the first nuclear tests were taken in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Correct. And why did you not go right back to Night City? Because, because, remember that. We were, because we were in, some of us were incommunicado with our, our, our jobs and <laughs> um, yeah, we're we got no longer jobs. Fired with prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some of us. Yeah, the, yes. the, the only character also, with it, a steady job <laughs> was suspect. Yes. Well, that and it didn't help too that we had a a, a foreign conglomerate uh, put out hits on us, so we had to flee the city. So <laughs> that was the answer I was hoping for. <laughs> yes, Sov Oil, uh, which is short for Soviet Oil because uh, Soviets are still a thing, <laughs> is uh, does currently have your names on the no-no list. And that includes Jinx, who never crossed Sob Oil. She was just uh, guilty by association. Yes. Very, very unhappy about this situation. <laughs> you, you should feel special with that. We'll probably try to negotiate with Sob on the backside. <laughs> Good luck with that. I know. <laughs> All right. So uh, we will pick up <clears throat> uh, in Las Vegas. The most recent thing that happened is that the characters went uh, salvaging in a uh, dump and uh, then threw a rave party, which was a financial success. Uh, there were a few casualties. Um, <laughs> at least one face melted off. Is it really a rave if there aren't fatalities and a face doesn't mash, melt? I mean, I think that's a given part of it. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't any of your faces. <laughs> that's the <laughs> important thing. I, I, uh, so, I, think, we, uh, I think we were able to get some new contacts, though, because... I don't know how he does it, but Greg ended up by it. <laughs> yes, uh, for any uh, new viewers who might be dropping in on the VOD later, uh, please uh, 
tell us who Greg is. All right. I... So Greg was a skeleton that we found uh, or came across at a, uh, a rest stop um, while we were on our, our trip to Alamogordo. And he's since become eh, my my sidekick, uh, co-pilot of 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 the of the limo. Calvary adopted him and will not let him go. It is like a safety blanket. It's like a child's safety blanket, except it's a giant skeleton that he dresses up like a doll. He's cool though. <laughs> so I I go after we're done cleaning up from the rave. I go uh, up to the limo and there's Greg sitting in the passenger seat. Kick back. He's got bottles of of booze in each hand, and he's got <laughs> lipstick kisses all over his face. It's very weekend of Bernie's. <laughs> I don't remember any of that, but it's canon now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he he had a better time than what I did. <clears throat> Yes, and we haven't met Mo yet. Uh, Nick, uh, could you tell us a little, a little about the character, the rocker boy, that you're bringing into the game? You are on mute. <laughs> uh, I feel like Arn. Oh man, um, he. He's okay. Yeah, he's he's like a street poet. Like he's a bass player in a in a band called God Slave the Queen. He. He believes in all things truth and getting the truth out there. Getting the truth out there. Or, and uh, he uh, he's got a mohawk, uh, multicolored technicolor mohawk that changes with his his moods. Um, he's got one of those implants that changes his skin color to whatever he wants. Um, yeah, he's a he's a huge into conspiracies and he'll tell you all about them. And, uh, Nick, did you get a chance to read through the Rocker Boy's uh, role ability called Charismatic Impact yet? Uh, not yet. None of the other. Okay. Oh, it's okay. basically mind control. Oh. Right. It's. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. You were so able to read conspiracy yeah. theories. Yeah. This, is, yep. this is great. But yeah, <laughs> influence others by sheer personality. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll walk through it when it comes up because uh, we haven't had a rocker boy in this campaign at all. None of the other players have seen how that works mechanically, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, so we have a rocker boy, a tech, and a former lawman. Who is former? I guess. Got... Yeah, he got tired. <laughs> Apparently he still has a Rocker Boy's role ability, but <laughs> also he can still call in for backup. <laughs> but no, whether but or not he's not collecting any paycheck <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> However, um, you are uh, looking, f uh, you are looking for work. I remember that you found at least one. Uh, lead on a job, and um, that job has gone away now. <laughs> uh, maybe that happened while you were um, uh, throwing the rave or after the rave, but I've got different, uh, and you were sleeping off the rave, but I got different plans for you for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, you guys receive a phone call from Trace Santiago, who is the media that you guys uh, met uh, back in Night City, and he was the one who warned you that Sav Oil had it out for you. And he said that he was going, while you were out of town, he was going to try to smooth things over. And that was the last you heard from him. So who's going to answer this call? Is it going to be Cavalry or is it going to be Jinx? Uh, I, I, Cavalry will will get excited. That's, I, that's I, probably I've been a good, one good plan, I think, yeah. 
I've I've probably had the most interaction with them. All right. And how does Calvary answer his agent anyway? Does he say hello? Does he say ahoy? Does he say howdy, Padma? Does he say get me the hell out of here? What did you do to my job? <laughs> You've reached the agent of the former special agent in charge of absolutely nothing cavalry. What can I do for you? Hey, Navarro. This is Trey Santiago. Pick hey. up your agent, man. Uh, yeah. How hung over are you? I <laughs> I think I only had three drinks, but yeah, I I've got a bit of a pounding headache. Okay, then you're fine. <laughs> uh listen, I have uh Managed to make contact with uh, some of the uh, IT people inside of Sob Oil, and I'm uh, making headway. I figured out uh, who it was uh, who leaked the information about you guys to them, and um, in the process of being able to uh, smooth that over, but uh, there might be a bribery payment required. So how serious are you guys about wanting to return to Night City? Uh how 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 large would this this bribe potentially need to be? Uh upwards of 10G. <laughs> Yeah, that would be too rich for my blood, too. So I oh, definitely that said heroes. that I would have to... Yeah, I definitely said that I would have to talk it over with you first. Uh, but uh, my insiders uh, can make uh, said that they can make your names uh, go away from Sob Oil's hit list. Uh, we just uh, need to get that money to them, and I... Oh, I uh, do have a possible solution for you, though. Uh, there is this uh, corpo with deep pockets who's been asking for you, and he actually reached out to me to know if uh, if I knew how to contact Calvary. Because uh, you've shown up in a couple of my articles now. Cool. There's this, this guy was named uh, Harold Hefferton. Uh, he's the agent for Ultimate Sparkles. Does that sound at oh, all familiar to you? Oh, yeah, I remember her. She had... Uh, her, her best friend tried to axe all of us. Yeah, oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay, good thing I am not the gossip reporter. <laughs> the Anyway... Uh, okay, uh, if you are uh, willing to talk to him, it turns out that he is in Las Vegas right now also. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we're, 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 uh, in between jobs and, and, well, raves for what Jinx has been wanting to, to do, so. Okay. Uh, he is in the Coliseum Casino downtown on the Strip in the penthouse. So do you? Uh, uh, so do you want me to uh, send notice that you're going to be that you are going to be coming by for a visit? Yeah, go ahead and do that. That'd be great. All right. Cool. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I will you be going three. alone? Uh, no, I better bring Jenks along. 
That way she doesn't feel left out. Yeah, I think that that, that sounds like a wise decision to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say bring Zara, but it's probably <laughs> better to bring leave Zara at home this time. It's, yeah, she's she's still sleeping off all that 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 stuff that she ingested a while back. Okay. All right, we'll go with that. I'll tell him to expect uh, two guests. However, you will be seeing double. Well, that's the other one I'm seeing right now because I think I'm seeing triple. <laughs> and for anybody who did, doesn't remember, Calvary's kind of the lightweight. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had forgotten that myself. <laughs> Jinx, while he's on this call, has come up behind him, but has her headphones on. She has her, like, mouse ears on. It's just kind of, like, yeah. head-banging. <laughs> and, and offers Calvary another beer. No. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I need to get coffee. I need coffee. And then just goes off towards the, uh, the kitchen. So... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I, in the... I don't know if there's a kitchen. Uh, the fridge. Sorry. <laughs> you guys are like uh, sleeping in an alley or a carport in your vehicles. <laughs> that sounds all right, yes. There's no kitchen. There is no fridge. She thinks there is. <laughs> She's just picking out stuff from a cooler. That's a little gross. As a matter of fact, uh, now that I remember, there is a rule in the game about this. Yes. Uh, because you guys are uh, homeless, I need each of you to make to roll me a ten cider and add your resist skill. Let's resist. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you because uh, you have been camping long enough that if you do not roll well on this and I think it's a DV 13 you are going to be uh, start begin suffering some exhaustion from sleeping on these concrete pillows uh -huh. that's wrong one that's here where's my reset score yes it is the full name of the skill is Resist Drug Slash Torture. Okay. Um, just a second. It got stuck on something and ended on its edge. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna just... It's, it's completely on a corner. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try again. I, I don't have one of those nice okay. wall things like everybody else does. <laughs> I have, like, carved out a tiny spot on my desk. <laughs> so. Darn okay. gravity. I know. Six plus uh, resistance, resistance. I've, um, I rolled an actual 13, so, uh, so I, I rolled a 5, so... I, I had to actually get above here? that, right? Yeah, yeah. In this system, it's the only system I've ever seen that does it this way. You have to roll above your target number. I, I'm, I'm going to add... Uh, I have no idea why our Telstorian did it that way. I don't see resistance on here. Where Am I looking at the wrong spot? Okay. It's, uh, the actual name of the skill is Resist Drug Slash Torture. <laughs> no. It's under your uh, yeah. body skills. Yeah, I don't don't know how uh, your uh, character sheet is laid out. Yeah, it jumps straight from persuasion to science. Okay, so yours are arranged alphabetically. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a willpower skill. Uh, what is your will stat? Will, will, will. Okay. So then I got six plus three. 
nine. Okay. All right. Uh, you probably have a probably have a couple of points and resist, uh, but um, it's not going to be enough. Okay. Uh, both of you failed. So that means that uh, Calvary has been role playing well so far. <laughs> uh, no penalties to any of your rolls kick in, but uh, you're a little, but you're feeling a little bit sore and a little, and you've got some bags under your eyes, and you're starting to get a little tired of uh, sleeping in the trunk or wherever it is that you've carved out a sleeping space. The, the driver's seat. <laughs> Yeah, you spent a week just in the dump digging, <laughs> digging stuff out. So you guys have been camping for a while now. Oh, uh, and that brings us. Uh, speaking of sleeping, uh, Mo is currently sleeping on a couch, and uh, and gets uh, woken up by some uh, by someone kind of uh, slapping his foot. Oh, what? God, croc, mate. What are you doing that for? <laughs> He's Australian. I love this character boy. <laughs> he don't know. He's, he he's, don't a, know. he's an American kid who's listened to a lot of punk rock who, who took over an accent that he has no idea how to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we'll get okay. away with a bad accent. <laughs> Mo wakes up <laughs> inside I uh inside an office. I posted an image and this is a uh good reason for the uh anyone listening at home to join the Discord for Haunted Log. So you can see these images that I'm posting. Uh, you're waking up inside an office that is overly neon, even for the uh, cyberpunk. It is uh, definitely in Las Vegas on the Strip. Uh, the outside is uh, brightly illuminated with all the colors of the rainbow. And the inside of the office is no less brightly colored with all of the uh, lights of the rainbow. Did you post it in Cyberpunk? Uh, you've got hologram. What? Yeah, it is in the Cyberpunk Discord. I posted it at 9.28. It is in the Cyberpunk channel. I posted it at 9.28 p.m. Gotcha. So, so, might have to scroll up a bit. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, music producer fun. Harold Hesserton was the guy who uh, bumped your leg, Mo. Oh, hey, mate, hey, guy, gee, uh, I wake up in uh, Beaver Town, and I, God, I don't wait well, I fell asleep, but I wake up here in Beaver Town, I don't know, well, who, <laughs> what are you bring me here for, mate, I just, oh, this look, oh, this is too bright, oh, can you turn that down, can you turn that down a little bit, I, oh, man, oh. Okay, uh, he walks over to the desk, uh, he turns the dial, and all of the lights in the office dim. And uh, the windows also dim. They become a little less transparent. And he asks, Is that better, Mr. Mamori? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's chipped, man. It's chipped, mate. Oh, so chipped. <laughs> no. uh, you're not in a Beaverville, by the way. Uh, you are in Las Vegas. I don't know uh, how much you remember, but you've been sleeping on my couch for about two days now. I was about to call Trauma Team. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good, like, bender there, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. Too much Guinness. Uh, do we have Guinness? I don't know. Maybe I'm just making shit up now. Maybe I remember Guinness. I don't know. Oh. Um. I saw some of what you took. It definitely was not Guinness. 
Uh, by the way, uh, the rest of your band left without you. Uh, <laughs> they are in Albuquerque, but they'll be back by the weekend. Oh, you need them. They need me more than I need them, eh? Uh, you need a shower more than you need them. Huh. Yeah. A little right, me. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Oh, I right. go take a shower now. He kind of like is All right. really stupid. He'll, he'll just do whatever you tell him to do. Okay. Uh, you go to leave, and the uh, office door will not open for you. Uh. And Hefferton says, "Oh, um, sorry about that. Uh, you're welcome to use the shower here." But this floor is under medical quarantine now. My orders. Oh. Is it something I did? No. It's not something you did. Uh, oh, that's good for one. Uh, this, has to do with, this has to do with another client of mine. Uh, but uh, you are welcome to use the shower and the decontamination station. It, they're both down the hallway that way. I appreciate the fact that shower was you do know how to use one, right? Five times. <laughs> oh yeah, it, yeah. I remember. It's all good. I'll right, get. I'll, I'll figure it out. He goes down. Okay. The hallway. And it does not know. All right. Now I it. as. <laughs> yeah, I as a GM am wondering uh, what was Mo's interpretation of that question. Was he being asked if he knew how to use a shower, or was he being asked if he knew how to use a decontamination unit? Uh, he knew how to use a shower. Both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, ooh, this is an opportunity to make a roll. I want you, Nick, to roll me a 10 cider, and the skill that you are going to add to that roll is going to be wardrobe and style. It's under social skills. It is a cool-based skill. Ooh, I got a plus 11 to that. Holy smokes. I, yeah, I was going to ask for a 13. I got, a, <laughs> so. I got an 11. I rolled a 0. Oh, wait. That's a 10. So I got yes, 21. Yes, that is a 10. 21. Okay. Roll another 10 cider and add it to your 21. 26. Damn you, clean up well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you took the manage to take off uh, and put to good use every hotel sample of every fluid in this bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and your mohawk has never looked better. It's just a good hair day. You are going to get a uh, plus two to all of your social roles for the rest of the day. That was so good. <laughs> I just, I have this image yeah, of That him includes leaving... your charismatic impact. I have this image of him leaving the shower and just the floors being swamped with water and leftover like bottles and wrappers and just everything. <laughs> <laughs> just... You ever seen the young ones? When they take a bath? No, I haven't seen that one. No. Oh, yeah, that's a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, for the fan service fans, uh, what are what are most tattoos that are revealed as he steps out of the shower? <laughs> um, he's got a, a little grenade on one. Um, it looks like the one from uh, Green Day. Uh, the <laughs> uh, what was that album? Uh, Nimrod? I think it was Nimrod. Um, yeah. He's got a, a picture of Margaret Thatcher on a, on the bicep. Uh, she's got money symbols on her eyes. Uh, <laughs> he went retro with the tattoos. <laughs> he, uh, he's got a... We're going to go way back. He's got a Winston Churchill like uh, over his heart. <laughs> And he's 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 not he's he is from the United States, correct? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, he's got a, a weird one of Robbie Williams like over his belly button. 
that's a reference that he went even over my head. He's a is was Robbie Williams a musician? Yeah, he was a. He's kind of like a. He was in a boy band back in the mm -hmm. early two thousands, and they, he became like this huge thing in Europe, and not so much in America. But yeah, he. <laughs> so. I, he's, see, he's I, digging I, deep. I I thought you were going to say that he had like a a wall tattooed across his chest or something like that in in memorial to to Pink Floyd. The Pink Floyd. That's a good one too. <laughs> Maybe that's on his knuckles. Okay. He's got a little, like, brick wall <laughs> on his knuckles. There you go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. When you emerge out of the shower, uh, you're going to, and, uh, but before you step out of the bathroom, you are going to hear some singing from somewhere in the apartment, in this penthouse, and you're, and you instantly recognize the voice, but you have not heard this song before. Uh, the voice is from a, a pop performer called Ultimate Sparkles. She is the main client of Hefferton, uh, but this uh, but she sounds like she's singing out of genre. What she is singing now, you can't quite make out the words, but it's uh, but it's uh, slower. Lower, it sounds almost like a funeral dirge. It's definitely a sad song. Uh, he's going to go check that out. Okay. First thing that came to my mind was from Space Spaceballs. <laughs> he's a beast. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is uh, Mo covering himself? No. <laughs> before he does this, okay. Walking out uh, with the only thing uh, between uh, you and the elements being a uh, censoring cloud of steam. Uh, you walk uh, back the hall and you find a room that has like a large glass cube built into the room and you see a woman uh whose back is turned to you playing an old mini gr mini grand piano very old school as she as she's singing about uh a caged she's singing about a caged bird now that you can hear the lyrics a little better. And you recognize the voice, but she doesn't look lo anything like she's looked in uh, her posters or uh, any of her uh, concert footage that you've ever seen. Because as the punk rocker, I'm sure that you have uh, sat around with your bandmates and uh, poked fun at, uh, at pop music before. Oh, yeah. Or actually, how do you care about... Uh, actually, do you care anything about pop music? Does Mo? How does Mo feel about the other genres? He, uh, he believes that anybody that listens to anything but um, what he likes is an idiot. That tracks for punk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've known a lot. <laughs> All right. Does he quietly listen? Uh... Like a peeping Tom, or does he interrupt like uh, someone even more rude? <laughs> um, he's kind of taken aback by somebody who he believed had absolutely no talent would uh, actually be able to inspire somewhat of an emotion in him. And he's going to <laughs> um, just find a seat behind her so she doesn't see him and just kind of like, kind of like, where... Where did this, uh, yeah, just, he's kind of mesmerized by it. Okay. Oh, uh, which brings us back to the other edge runners. Hi, you guys arrive at the casino and, what did I call it? The Coliseum is the name of this casino. And, of course, uh, you're welcomed right into the lobby. Uh, but when you go to but when you go to the penthouse, uh, some security 
some security stops you. And yeah. says, uh, excuse me, the penthouse is up these stairs. It is off limits currently. Uh, we we were told that we were to 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 to, to have an appointment with uh, Mr. Hefferton. Uh, Trey. Uh, Let me tell you, Mr. Uh, Heffer yeah. talked to Calvary and said when we were supposed to be here, we were supposed to meet him. So I think we need to go see Mr. Heffer. It's. Hefferton, and he didn't talk to me. I talked to Trace Santiago, who's the one who told me okay. that we were to be here. And All right, he was the security guard looking both. Double right now instead of triple. <laughs> the security guard looks you both uh, over from hat down to shoes and back up again. Now I would like you to each make me a die roll, and I'm going to give you your choice. You may either roll wardrobe and style, or you may roll persuasion. Oh, I don't boy. have wardrobe and style, I don't think. Okay. A wardrobe and style is a, a cool-based skill, so you could use your cool. Okay. Uh, persuasion is also cool. Yep. I'm going to so go. So if you don't have persuasion. either of those. Yeah, I know that you've got something in persuasion. Yes. Do I use the total? Yes. Yes, you do. Don't worry. It doesn't matter because it's still a seven because I rolled badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, DV is only going to be an 11 because you are actually on the guest list. Mm -hmm. We're just saying it does. Woo! So I'm still my slightly right. inebriated uh, lack of sleep state. <laughs> okay. People... He's worked with he works with musicians. Um, they're used to say uh, they're used to seeing uh, people who are hungover come and go. <laughs> Apparently. Is <laughs> was he talking slow enough for people to think he's cool as opposed to just realizing he's just really, really hung over? Okay. So uh, the security guard nods and says, all right, follow me. It's not that way. It's this way. And then he walks past the staircase and he opens a hidden door in the hallway, which has a little... Um, a uh, private escalator that goes up to the penthouse. I'd like to be able to have one of those at some point. That'd so you cool. go up to the you go up to the escalator, and then when you get there, you see uh, some tape over the door, uh, which um, the the plastic tape itself uh, is yellow and reads. Uh, Biocontamination warning. Um, we're not going in there, are we? As the security guard says, yes, you are. Oh, man. I'll be going in. I will be going in with you. It is not for this. These warnings are not for your protection. They're for the protection of the people inside. Oh. Okay. Why? All right. He takes over. Yeah, he takes. Uh, he moves the tape out of the way. He knocks on the door, and it sounds like a secret knock. He does like three hard knocks and three soft knocks, and then he then he opens the door with a key card and he steps inside, and he says, "This way, Mister Hefferton will see you now." Okay. Do you guys happen to have any coffee? I could really use a cup. Probably so. I don't care if it's Probably a day old or, or if it's still got the grounds in it. I, I just need some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a... Uh, if you spend a luck point, the answer is yes. I'll spend a luck point because I'm that hard up for coffee right now. 
<laughs> okay. <clears throat> Not only is there coffee, but the security guard knows where to get it. And he brings you stuff that the... Uh, <clears throat> And he brings you a cup of the stuff that uh, Ultimate Sparkles drinks. It's a, a fully organic, uh, flown in from the uh, one remaining uh, acre of rainforest in Brazil. <laughs> it is. No way. That wouldn't come from the rainforest. That would come from the mountains. Okay, from the Andes. Uh, freshly brewed, and it comes in a uh, dinky little china cup. I, it says, I, Here I, you go, stronger oh, than it looks. Thank you. I take one sip, and it's just like all, all of a sudden, it's like, oh wow, <laughs> the, oh, 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 but, oh yeah. <laughs> Somebody clip that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and at this point, uh, Jinx also hears the uh, piano music being played and someone singing down the hallway. And you guys are now in the penthouse at the top of this casino. And as I described it earlier, it is very, very neon. It looks like the Las Vegas Strip outside got sucked into a vacuum cleaner <laughs> into this office. Are the floors sl uh, shiny and slick? Uh, yes, and uh, uh, illuminated with RGB lights between each of the tiles. Jinx is going to take a run for it and going to try to slide on it like a slip and slide. Going somewhat <laughs> towards the music room. <laughs> Trying to basically... Give me an athletics roll. <laughs> athletics Give me roll. an athletics roll DV10. Da, 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 I rolled a 10. So I didn't roll an 11, I rolled a 10. <laughs> okay. Uh, not good enough to make it look cool. Uh, but all, not bad enough for you to fall on your face and take any and uh, suffer any injuries. <laughs> uh, you kind of just uh, slide over the floor and uh, stumble into the door frame. I've got the little then, saucer. Uh, <laughs> how does cavalry make an entrance? I, I'm I'm holding the saucer and the little cup, and I'm just taking sips for, uh, after every couple steps, and it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> coffee, yeah. I need okay, by the time you get to, by the time you get to the music room, you are no longer seeing double; you are seeing one and a half. <laughs> This is good stuff. Oh my. I need more of this. All right. You get to the room and uh, you see uh, the woman sitting at the piano uh, who Calvary does not recognize. Uh, he has seen Ultimate Sparkles before. Uh, she was a, when you saw her last, she was a white girl uh, with a, a long, like, uh, unnaturally long blonde hair and this woman has uh cropped up uh, uh dark blue purplish hair and i just posted reposted an image of the woman that you're seeing at that you are seeing in this room and she is every speck of skin here is covered with a uh, synth synth weave uh, chrome colored, bot, chrome covered, uh, cybernetic armor. So you, so that is our ultimate sparkles, but you may or may not recognize her that anymore. You tell me. Vaguely familiar, but 
the person who the voice is coming from, I don't know. Jinx is going to recognize yeah, this is singing. And she's basically going to start racing around the cube trying to see how to get in and see who it is and see who's singing. <laughs> Okay, uh, you're able to do that, and uh, you do uh, recognize the voice as being the pop star Ultimate Sparkle. However, you almost uh, stumble headlong into a uh, mohawked man who is sitting on a stool at the back of the room behind her. And that's Mo. And now the party has officially met in a tavern. <laughs> and my the, the uh, coffee's gone now but i'm still <laughs> taking phantom sips of it because it was just that good uh nick a small woman with wild eyes uh just uh almost ran into you <laughs> Easy there, love. <laughs> Not too close, eh? And she's going to turn around. Okay, and uh, the lighting that is on Nick's camera right now is at, is kind of perfect. <laughs> <laughs> My ring light because, Jinx, out. because, yeah, he looks like a silhouette, and that's kind of what Jinx is seeing right now. Gotcha. In the, in the dark on. corner of this dark room. She's going to flip on, like, a flashlight so she can see who he is and see him in full. <laughs> and uh, she's just going to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's so funny, right? Oh, oh, Pats! Oh, crap! I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh yeah, I had forgotten that that uh, he was wearing a steam cloud, <laughs> which is a bad break at this point in time. I was in the pool, all right. Oh. Yeah, uh, he left behind a uh, wet butt print on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and after she finishes laughing, she's going to go back to the cube and trying to figure out. Who's in the cube, kind of how to get in the cube, what's going on with the cube, and if that is ultimate sprinkles or not. Okay. Uh, give so me a to... deduction skill roll. Deduction. Uh, this is going to be a... This is going to use your deduction skill, and it's going to be a DV 15. Deduction. <laughs> okay, if I don't have deduction, <laughs> like, I have none of these it would be intelligence. Okay. okay. And okay. you yeah. can use... All right. I will let you uh, substitute uh, basic tech for deduction in this case, because okay. you are solving a mechanical puzzle. But it's going to be a DV-17 instead. Gotcha. A DV what? Okay. 17. So one seven. Okay. Yeah, that's I what rolled, you have to beat. I rolled, I rolled a thirteen. So. Okay, that's good enough for you to deduce what it is, mm -hmm. but not to get you through the locks that would get you, that would allow you to open it. This okay. is a, uh, this is a biological uh, containment, um, room. And I was it say, is I'm there. I'm sure and it's a bad idea to get it. Has, in, so. Yeah. 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 This is the type that you would uh, find um, in like a uh, contagious disease ward. Except this one was custom made. And probably cost more money than you've seen in your life. So then the girl at the piano uh, stops playing because you guys have definitely been noisy enough by this point. 
that she would have noticed. Uh, she uh, turns around on her stool and she says, is that police officer Navarro? My goodness, you look bad. Yeah, it's it's, it's no longer police officer. It's just now Navarro or Calvary. He had thirteen shots last night. He can't remember it. What? <laughs> oh God. Which means he probably then only had familiar... about four or five. <laughs> and uh... another familiar boy, that of Mr. Hefferton, uh, greets you and says, Oh, hello, Cavalry. Uh, congratulations on quitting that dead end job. You're always too good for it. I... He walks into the room and he is outside the glass cube. I, I appreciate the uh, the the vote of confidence, Mister Hefferton. All right, and for the purpose of having everyone together, uh, Mo now uh, can re-enter the room uh, as clothed to the degree that he wants to be. What is he wearing? Oh, he's straight up Billy Idol, nineteen eighty, uh, leather jacket, no shirt, <laughs> uh, leather pants. Uh, probably like a Union Jack somewhere, hanging out of pocket. Uh, Doc Martens. Games. Yeah. <laughs> like a couple gold chains, yeah. With a cross on it. <clears throat> yeah, real low. Okay. Uh, Hefferton says, uh, oh, welcome back, Mr. Mel. Uh, we have a little bit of business to discuss, but uh, uh, you're welcome to you're welcome to listen in if you like. Yeah, well, wake me up when it's through. It's too boring. All right, see you. He just plops down on the couch. Okay. And then Hefferton says, uh, Mr. Navarro, I don't think I've met your companion. Is this your wife? <laughs> No! No! Uh uh. <laughs> no. By the way, where, 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 where can I get more of this coffee? This stuff is great. Why would you assume wife? Why would you assume wife? I need to know what I'm doing so I can fix it. Why would you assume wife? <laughs> this is our, our, our new tech that Zara and I kind of. Picked up from Doll Island or Doll Skull Island. I, 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 I don't know. To help them out. <laughs> no. Just sort of wandering around. And I helped out of pure generosity. The, 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 this is Jinx. She, she's good with tech. Okay. Hefferton uh, ignores Jinx's question, and then, but uh, he does continue it by saying. Uh, it's excellent that you thought to bring a tech with you. Uh, that will be needed. Here's the situation. Uh, since you last saw us, uh, we broke contract uh, with our former with our former record company. Uh, that was Worldcom, and Worldcom was not happy about this. Uh, they did, uh, if you were remem remember, uh, you uncovered it, attempt to uh, have my client assassinated in, or, as a marketing opportunity. Well, we didn't like that very much. So uh, we signed with, so we signed with a competitor in order to stop that sort of nonsense. Uh, however, there was a complication which was not in the contracts that I didn't foresee. You see, when we uh, first signed with WorldCom, 
uh, WorldCom offered medical upgrades as part of its standard package for all of its top tier talents. This includes an enhanced antibodies cybernetic upgrade. What we didn't know at the time was that the enhanced antibodies upgrade was sabotaged. It can be turned off along with her entire immune system at any time by WorldCom. That's not good. It's not. And as you can see, we are taking precautions. But we decided to uh, risk having an audience with you today regardless. I'm afraid that Miss Sparkles, uh, in her current condition, is unable to ever leave her glass room. Would that also explain and why the, she doesn't look like she normally looks like? Yes, more augmentations that were medically necessary as precautions. Even though we have taken the best of our precautions, uh, you may remember her personal assistant, whom you rescued. Yes, uh, she had the same implant. Uh, the best of precautions were taken with her, and it turned out to not be enough. She's no longer with us. In fact, uh, my own immune system has been similarly compromised. But WorldCom has simply not gotten around to flipping the switch yet. We want this situation fixed. And we're willing to do quite a lot. It turns out that WorldCom's uh, custom cybernetics come from a lab right here in Las Vegas. That's what we're doing here. We've been trying to get inside that lab or get someone inside that lab by every legal means necessary. And illegal, if you count bribery. We haven't made any progress. We don't know how much time we have left. But the current situation is not sustainable. We need someone to somehow get into that lab. And, rec and recover the... Uh, whatever designs that they have in there, which can tell us how to restore my client's health. Do you think that you could pull that off? I'm just thinking through some things. What? These two. Are in a giant. These what? two? Oh, yeah, right. I don't want to see this. Oh, can I go? Can I go with them? I want to go with them. I want to see how... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going up for this. No way. Maybe you can put her in like Everton a... says... Hefferton says... Hefferton says, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, this lab has a front as a plastic... as a... Uh, biocosmetics facility. Uh, actually, one of the best, uh, most renowned in the world. He could get in through the front door because he's exactly the type of client that uh, they pref that they prefer. No? Beautiful, mate. No, they don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Uh, Mr. Mo, anything would be an improvement. Oh, uh, oh, oh, how much? Oh, they're, they're not talking to me. No, I'm supposed to get you in. Yeah, not not for me, for you. 
Does the lab happen to currently have any open positions that they'd be hiring for, whether it's a tech or security or anything like that? Hefferton shrugs and says, um, maybe. I, I never thought to look into that. That's another avenue in for either myself or for Jinx or even for Zara. Have you considered making a giant hamster bubble to put her in so she could move and not be stuck in a box? <laughs> Just, you know, she could... Give me a persuasion roll! <laughs> DV12. Um, uh, I only rolled a seven. I'm not good at persuading people. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Hefferton, uh, set, uh, turns around and says, uh, U uh, UT? Uh, no, he, excuse me, US? Uh, US? What do you think about that? And she just bows her head and nods back, nods back and forth in disappointment. He says, uh, no, um, actually, that's not a good idea. Uh, that, uh, that could roll off of a stage. It would be impossible to get through most doorways. I mean, uh, well. If it rolls off the stage. We'll think about it for the next music video. A bouncer around like a beach ball, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your persuasion roll just went down from a seven to a six. <laughs> Better quit while you're ahead. Oh wait, you're not you were never ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hefferton asks, all right, what are you going to need from me? Or from the new mega corporation that we've signed with. How much tech do you have? Uh, personally, all I've got is uh, access to recording tech, like keyboards, instruments, music stuff, uh, some cameras. Uh, but uh, the new recording label. Uh, kind of un kind of unlimited. They're a big deal. I just have to jump through a couple of extra hoops. It takes a little longer to get. A couple more handshakes along the way. She's so sort of Calvary. She's like, I want all the tech. Give me all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, her. Her assistant, how long was it between the time that you knew that her implant was switched off to the time point where she passed? Just under a week. Okay. And with Ms. Ultimate Sparkles, how long has it been since? Uh, almost two months. Okay, so we're probably working on borrowed time right now. I think I'm going to, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the actual, t like, tech in the book, because I didn't read it, but... <laughs> Thanks, Bryce. Bryce. I know, you're all shocked. You're like, what? <laughs> what? This doesn't, this doesn't sound like you at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I was... I, yes? I'm going to need uh, technology for unlocking safes and or doors. Cameras, specifically cameras that are on long leads that you can... Or th uh, like under doors or through things or drones or something 
all the cameras that like are available. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Okay. Probably something that um. Minor explosives. Big explosive. All the <laughs> explosives. We could get explosives. I think we should have some of the like. We should maybe get some like no, bigger explosives. No, yeah, no, 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 wait, no, I've rethought no, this. No, I've rethought no, this. No, we no, need, no, like, no, 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 no explosives. No, no, it's necessary. It's important. Efferton is writing this all down. He's he's making a list. You better check it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there? Uh, is there? Are there? Any is there any type of information that they have that you have gotten from Worldcom? Like any sort of disc that were slipped out of there, any sort of uh, insider information, anything at all? Oh. Um, uh, yeah, he puts his notepad down and says, uh, Worldcom has done this before. Uh, it's very good at, co it's very good at covering its tracks. Um, I was not able to get a hold of any leaked information about, uh, these, about these specific brands of, uh, of enhanced antibody packages. I was, we were able to extract one from the, from the patient who died. And it is, uh, we still have some lab techs looking at it. Um, just, they have not come up with a solution from it. I was just gonna ask if it. you guys happen to have that particular thing because the, the next thing that I would be wanting to check is to see if there was any self-destruct type tech that was integrated into it so that way uh, <coughs> the potential of overriding the shutoff or any way to, uh, to, to turn it back on in some form or fashion or the, the other thing would be is if we were to introduce um, a similar piece of, of, of tech, whether it would be a, uh, a temporary fix until we were able to get the actual uh, tech to see if that did, All right. might, might prolong. He's writing this down. And he says, okay, a uh, half measure to buy us some more time. Yeah. That, I'm waiting that, for that, Mo that. to say what Mo wants, too. You, you, you want, a fair question. He, he wants what a case. does Mo want out of this deal? He wants a case of, of, of single malt scotch. <laughs> They have all the recording tech there, so. <laughs> right, right. Need new base. <laughs> oh no, uh, his base is very, very special to him. Um, <laughs> um, I need, uh, yeah, uh, some, uh, some recording gear for, uh, for street performances. I need some of that, and uh, just. You know, uh, just whenever the mood hits me, uh, like a, a little like personal amplifier, it would be fine. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, the 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 scotch, yeah, give me some of that. <laughs> All right, Hefferton rolls his eyes, but he writes these items down on his list, uh, and, and I, he says, "In rooftop access, make rooftop access to uh, one of the largest buildings in the state." <laughs> All right, by the way, I look over at Calvary oh. and I go, he is going to be excellent cannon fodder. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, what she said. Everybody make me a perception roll. DV Lucky 13. Roll your 10 cider, add perception. You're trying to beat a 13. I got a 12. I got a 13. <laughs> so close. So close. What'd you get, Jason? I rolled a 10 and then a 6. So 16 plus oh. <laughs> 9. So 25. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Calvary's the only one who know who's paying attention. Uh, but he's able to determine uh, what's going on here. Uh, Mr. Hefferton is uh, suffering a uh, traumatic uh, medical event right now. Uh, he's turned pale. Uh, his uh, one of his eyes has started twitching in a weird way. Uh, the last thing he said uh, had a slight uh, bit of a slur to it. He's having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have some first aid skills. Would I try to if he? Would Calvary alert me to give do first aid or does Calvary? We have need a first medic. We need a medic now. <laughs> Hefferton's right. stroking out. All Hefferton right. says, "What are you talking about? I'm not." <coughs> oh, I roll him on his side so he don't choke on his own vomit and die like Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Try to do some first aid on him. I got first aid as a skill. Okay. First aid's not going to be enough. <laughs> gotcha. That's yeah, fair. With this. But uh, go ahead and roll it. Okay. You probably can't make things worse. <laughs> That's fair. Mm. Eighteen. 18. Okay. Yeah, that's enough to diagnose the problem. Uh, he's coughing up blood, and he's having a stroke at the same time. That sounds bad. Um, we need a crash cart now! Calling for an Yeah, ambulance? your first aid is good enough to determine that your first aid is not good enough. Gotcha. <laughs> Are we calling for, like, an ambulance you need to calm down? Bodyguards. <laughs> Both of those are valid choices. Which are you doing? I um, did, did the did the bodyguard that brought us that escorted us in. Did he leave the room? Yes, he did. He didn't come into the music room in the first place. I'm gonna go. Back to where he brought us in from and pound on. It's like, we need a medic! Get a medic in here! Your agent's no Okay, way. you have to go all the way back down the escalator in order to, Crap, in order to find him right now. What well, about this thing, right? I mean, he pulls out like, the, 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 what about this? Does this work? He starts <laughs> dialing numbers into it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you spend a luck point, the answer is yes. Nice, okay. All right, uh, your agent, uh, which is a semi, which has a very, very low power AI in it, and is able to figure out what it is that you actually want to do, uh, it says, uh, we are alerting trauma team. Whoa. A trauma team. Trauma team is en route to your location now. We better tell his bodyguards to let him in, right? Yeah, why don't you go do that, Mo? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got it. I'll be right back. Don't move him. It's evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. 
All right, Ultimate Sparkles, uh, who has not said much <laughs> to this point because uh, the Game Master kind of forgot she was there, <laughs> uh, puts her um, chrome hand on the glass and leans it and leans into it. Then uh, the uh, sort of like uh, the scene at the end of uh, Star Trek II. <laughs> Does she even have the? <laughs> Does she say the line? I can't remember his line. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that so we don't get sued? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At Paramount. I am not... Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> so, uh, she simply says, uh, Thank you, Harold. You were you were the best manager. Don't count him Wait, out does yet. That mean we're not going to get paid. Like if he has to stay alive so we get paid, I will try more here. <laughs> uh, Ultimate Sparkle says you will get paid. I am still a wealthy woman. I can see to it that you get I can see to it that you get paid. I cannot see to it that you're going to get all of your toys beforehand. <laughs> like no no dynamite. That would no. be the first thing <laughs> crossed <laughs> off the list. Oh. And then Hefferton collapses. I'm going to uh, go over and start uh, uh, take take his pulse, see if uh, uh, if there's a pulse, uh, if he's breathing. If not, I'm going to start chest compressions. Cold and clammy, weak pulse, and no breathing. All Is right. there a pulse? Okay. Um, <clears throat> would an adrenaline shot help? <laughs> <laughs> do you have an adrenaline shot? Yes, I do. I've decided I do. <laughs> oh my God. There's a first aid kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, you do have an, adre an adrenaline Giant shot. needle. It's got adrenaline in it. And you do, you do not have a paramedic skill, but you've got your first aid. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll me first aid skill. Uh, okay. The DV is going to be pretty high. It's going to be a 16. All right, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Instead of stabbing him in the heart, she stabs uh, him in the eye. So I rolled a 10. So you roll again and add it. Woo! I rolled a 9. So a 19 plus 12. Like a 31, I think. 31, yes. Okay. Uh huh. Um, yeah, uh, that does seem to help. Uh, his uh, pulse is getting stronger, maybe a little too fast, <laughs> and uh, he's not as pale. Uh, he is still, however, coughing up blood, and he is uh, starting, and he is starting to seizure now. Gotcha. Uh, where uh, has Mo actually managed to alert the uh, the bodyguards yet, or? Yes, Mo, you're reaching the uh, security guards who are down. Who you found uh, one floor downstairs? Okay, and he pounds on the wall. Just one of them kind of does a double take and and asks, "Hey, how did you get in here?" No more of that, mate. Ah, uh, Harold, Harold, uh, having stroke. You have trauma team on its way. Make sure they get that. Not trusting those two morons up there with them right now. They probably did it oh. to him. Oh, no. All right. The guard says, um, 
uh, reaches to uh, an earpiece and says, uh, oh boy, uh, code orange, code orange in the penthouse. Uh, clear a path, clear a path. And then the two security guards, uh, they run off somewhere. And Mo is left uh, standing there by himself. Yes, I'll follow. Okay. Uh, back upstairs I go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no point in uh, stretching this out any longer. Uh, trauma team does arrive. And uh, when they arrive, um, they uh, blast open uh, the wind. <laughs> Uh, one of the uh, pen, one of the uh, penthouse windows. Uh, they bring their uh, aerodyne that's uh, hovering right next door. Uh, they uh, crash through. A, they crash through a window and rush into the room with a gurney. I will. And they ask, "Where's the patient?" Right down there on the floor. Okay. And I'm going to make a roll myself. And things go smoothly enough. They get him onto the gurney. Uh, they pull. Um, they pull out a uh, a necklace off of him, which has a uh, trauma team medical ID on it. They scan that, and they say, uh, all right, silver coverage. Let's get him to the tower. And they carry the gurney back to their aerodyne. And they fly off. Then Ultimate Sparkle says, excuse me, there is something that you should know. Now that the paramedics have left, um, my recording label security will be aware and will be here themselves any second now. They do monitor this medical facility from a respectable dif from a respectable distance. They no doubt saw you come up, and uh, they no doubt saw a uh, trauma team leave. If you want to avoid uh, being detained and questioned, you should probably uh, make your way out now while you can. All right, we'll, we'll take that under Without advisement. Without question, Jinx takes off at a full run. <laughs> We will, we, we, we will do our best to get the get the tech schematics to figure out how to to get you better. And She's already on the lower floor. <laughs> like... I'll 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 uh, rush out and uh, if I if I pass Mo, it's like uh, Mo this way, come with us. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you run out, out. Uh, Ultimate Sparkles calls. <laughs> Ultimate Sparkles calls to you. Five hundred medical drive. That's the address. I'll yell back. Thank you. <laughs> Is Mo leaving with these two edge runners? Yeah. He's uh yeah, he wants to see how this goes. I think Calvary okay. grabbed him by one of the gold chains and just started hauling him out. <laughs> <laughs> she got some chest hair in there with he got some chest hair with it. That's why he can't <laughs> it just didn't snap off. Actually, they, they, they were instead of actual gold, they were probably like uh plastic. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Calvary, give me a brawling roll to Ooh. see if you are able to uh, uh, <laughs> uh, gently manhandle Mo uh, without uh, removing a traumatic amount of chest hair. <laughs> okay. This is typically opposed by evasion, but I don't think that Mo is evading here, so we're just going to call this a simple DV10. All right, so I rolled an 18. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Mo, you've actually uh, uh, paid to be manhandled uh, less well. <laughs> you are. Uh, this reminds me of that time in Singapore. Oh, mate, you got <laughs> stories. I'll tell you sometime. But, oh, yeah. A little rough for the, uh, not so, kind of like it, but. Uh, All right, and, uh, uh, Just the entire and you leave, uh, Vala. <laughs> okay, you get to the front of the casino, and, uh, the valet driver, uh, for some reason, uh, has your, uh, limo, uh, ready to go. And this is the first time that Mo is seeing this. Uh, you are driving around in an armored limousine. Is the grenade launcher currently deployed, or is it tucked away? It's tucked away. Okay. Looks like, yeah, it looks like a, uh, a normal uh, limousine to you, Mo. Uh, it's not a stretch limousine. It's kind of a short limousine. It's not that impressive. And Greg, Greg's, Greg's sitting in the in the passenger seat, and he's kind of he got his arm up like this, and he's got a, a stray cigarette uh, <laughs> that's still kind of smoldering in in his mouth. Oh, and Jinx is trying to open the driver's side door. <laughs> Just looking over. I can oh try. Oh my goodness! Oh. I can try. I can drive it. No. Back seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mo just gets in. He goes all the way to the back seat. All right. As Okay, Mo gets in the back. Uh Calvary is driving. Uh Jinx gets in the back. Um uh Greg is riding shotgun. Uh, Greg kind of gives the valet driver a look, like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, let's see if the valet driver is able to keep his cool. Uh, yeah, he does. He does like a uh, finger guns back at Greg. <laughs> and as you guys are pulling away. Uh, Jinx and Mo will get a good view of this. Uh, the security team that you were warned about is pulling in right now. And they pull in in a series of like a half a dozen black vans. And some corporates and some corporate uh, security types uh, in uh, black body armor uh, start, uh, start piling out and running into the casino. Where they meet uh, uh, casino security and kind of just plow through them. Okay. You can drive a little faster, Calvary. It's okay. You can even hit the speed limit here. That'd be all right, too. I'll just kind of, as I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to go to 500 Medical Drive. Okay. I want, uh, I want, uh, Mo and Jinx to each make me a perception roll. And one of you is going to succeed no matter how badly you roll. Mm. I just wanted to see who, which of the two of you rolls the higher. <laughs> Fourteen. Thirteen. Okay. 
13. Okay, Mo notices this, uh, which is a little bit of which is a little bit appropriate, but it uh, doesn't mean much to him. Uh, the uh, security team that arrived had did have a uh, corporate logos on the side of their black trucks. It is Saab Oil. Okay. Probably okay we didn't run into those guys, I would say. <laughs> oh, you see that? Say what? Oh, uh, never mind. Not important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so across town, um, you're going to uh, drive away from the strip and to the part of Las Vegas where all of the uh, high-end biosculpting clinics exist. Uh, this is where people from all over the world come for their cosmetic surgery and their full body uh, cybernetic conversions, which act which do exist, and they're in the game now. But they can take, but it takes weeks to get done. And so the place is like a resort. And also, this is the place where most of the exotic biosculpting happens, where people can do things like get cat ears and dog tails or a pair of bat wings and go however uh, as much or as little animal as they like. And as you move to that side of town, you start seeing uh, like some like a gang of uh, bio-sculpted anthropomorphic coyotes uh, riding the, uh, riding their motorcycles into town. So uh, you see a couple of uh, rabbits. Yes. <laughs> you see a furry in a fursuit. Uh, speaking with a furry who has no fur suit and just the fur <laughs> on a street corner, and you think that one of them is a prostitute, but you can't tell which one. Maybe they they're both ra they're both rabbit girls. <laughs> and you find that uh, the address of five hundred is Dr. Rama's medical enhancements. And it looks to be like a very, very high-end medical facility. Even though Dr. Rama would be a, a glorified ripper doc. I would normally. So I would you say, found the play. Yes. Normally, I would say stop and prepare and get stuff ready, and then I remembered we're we're living out of our vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's just not going to work. But I am trying to get as much tech together as I have in the limo. <laughs> okay. What is the plan going forward from here? Alfred, Take a you minute had and discuss it before you drove yourself. here, right? <laughs> Calvary, <laughs> you had a plan before we drove here, right? Yeah, the plan was to get here. <laughs> is it, is it really? Yes. You drove up to the front of the building. No. We drove to where the building was located, and as you can tell, I have 
driven past it now, and I'm looking for a parking garage that's close by. <laughs> that's not helpful. <clears throat> Are you going to go in and ask for a medical, like, upgrades? Hold on. No. Wait a second. Hey, uh, you. Tattoo dude. <laughs> Sorry, he's just looking out the window. <laughs> I start throwing things at his head. Hey! 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 Oi! Hey. What? You! What? I'm going to put some stuff on you. No, you're not. Okay. I. How about if you go... You know what? I think you could use some medical enhancement. Is this before? Is this? Is this because you saw my willy? <laughs> yes, yes it is. I think you could use some medical enhancement. Which is why I was suddenly suggest as he's doing this, like as he's looking away, I'm throwing like various cameras on him and some microphones. But he's a little I'm you know, trying to do it subtly so he doesn't notice that I'm miking him up. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to wonder how I'm gonna play off that I don't know you're doing this. <laughs> Um, he didn't even notice he was getting chest hairs pulled. I don't think he's oh, going to he notice. <laughs> he just didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh, yeah, I, I, this, this was the point, uh, right? Like, come clearly here, Mo in. knows that he's... Clearly Mo knows that he is being equipped with a hidden mic. Uh, there, there's no disguising that. But I don't know that he cares whether or not. <laughs> no, he, he he knows the plan that he has to get in there. Like he remembers that you guys were saying that he needs to infiltrate the place. Gotcha. So, and I'm like, uh, that's it. This is all I get. What what, you, <laughs> what else do you want? You got like a camera. You got it's like a duct camera. Tape. It's duct taped on. They're gonna know. You got like a shirt. <laughs> Do you have a shirt? Sorry, he needs a shirt. Take it off, Greg. No. Greg's Take it off, Greg. Greg, Greg's, Greg's <laughs> styling right now. Get one of Greg's shirts and give it to Mo. Or I will pick one. No, he doesn't need a shirt. What'll, what's going to go on is that I'm going to act as his bodyguard and escort him in to the facility. I go you to are going to, you, you are going to tag along and you're going to have your kit kitted out with audio and visual surveillance and we are going to see what they have available of for yeah he's taking too long I just start like using the duct tape to make upside down crosses and I say tell him it's a style <laughs> <laughs> and then I zip his coat up Oh, heavens help me. There is actually a skill for that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's called Conceal Slash Reveal. Yeah, Conceal Slash Reveal Object. Um, it is an intelligence-based skill, and it's going to be opposed by somebody else's perception later. I, so let's I have, go ahead and I roll have, that. <laughs> I have fashion wear, but I don't have, like, I have fashion wear, but I don't have a number next to it. I Means it's probably just your base. Oh, okay. Uh, your fashion wear is not a skill. Um, oh. That is uh, the type of uh, a type of cyberware that you have, like uh, your oh, like okay. uh, glow, like um, I think. like tech hair, uh, shift hack, 
uh, implants on your eyes, glowing tattoos, all of that counts as fashion wear. Gotcha. And okay. does not eat up your humanity point. Nice. Right. Okay, I don't have conceal reveal either. <laughs> I have. I don't know which one of these would work for that. It's just your intelligence score. If you don't have okay. it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can use intelligence. Um, I'll let you substitute wardrobe and style. I don't have wardrobe. Would you? Either. Would you don't? Uh, yeah, Jinx wouldn't have that skill either. Okay, just use your intelligence then. <laughs> I rolled a nine. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> My rolling rolling's going great today. Okay. Don't worry. It's all good. So you, you, rolled a, <laughs> all right. you rolled a nine or you rolled and then added that to your intelligence I and rolled got and a added nine. It into mine. <laughs> I rolled and added it. Okay. Mine. Well uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh the person that you're trying to uh fool might have a lousy perception. Uh, it 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 could happen. Unlikely. Hey, Nick, roll me D100. 18. And Jason, uh, tell me where exactly you're going to, uh, where exactly you're going to park. Uh, there, are you going to park uh, in the parking lot for Dr. Rama's? Or are you going to go to a less, con find a less conspicuous uh, uh, parking facility like a tower? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking That's for like a, a, a parking yeah. garage. Okay. Uh, what you get, Nick? 18. 18. On a D100? Yep. Yeah, that's low. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the random encounter table. So uh, as you're parking... Uh, you notice that uh, Greg is kind of uh, staring off in one direction, and uh, Calvary uh, follows Greg's gaze and uh, sees a and uh, sees a group who's uh, walking towards the uh, limo's parking spot, and they are dressed like a bunch of corpos. Uh, Allison, roll me a ten sider. I rolled a nine. Okay. Uh, there are nine corpos in this group talking amongst themselves. They don't look like they are paying the limo any attention. But uh, Jinx does notice that behind them is a group of booster gangers who are coming up a little bit faster. Which of these two groups is less annoying? <laughs> That's very subjective. <laughs> okay, and... All right, uh, there are uh, three booster gangers, and although the corpos outnumber them uh, three to one, uh, the corpos are not armed at all. Uh, the boosters are uh, wearing leather, and they are armed with, uh, and they are uh, definitely armed. Uh, they're carry, uh, they're carrying chains and clubs. Does it look like they're going to attack the corpos? Very much so. And maybe make some uh, some eddies and on and protecting the corpos. Anybody game? Or are we just going to watch them get... I, uh... I, I, uh... 
I'll do something. I want some clubs. I'll grab these. I, I'm like, and we could use more weapons. <laughs> um. I. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and stand up. There isn't anything like we have a. Do we have a sunroof on this? Yeah. Limo? Yeah. I'm going to stand up through the sunroof yeah. and rack up my shotgun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that gets everybody's attention. And I, uh, I look over and like, okay, so the uh, corp. I, I look at the the corporal the... execs. They kind of just uh, freeze in place and uh, stare at Jinx wide eyed. Uh, but the boosters who are coming, who are still coming up behind them, uh, look suddenly look angry. You suits uh, better go drop, drop down to the ground. I'm like, uh, <laughs> boosters, put down the clubs, or I'm going to blow your heads off. I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> and really, really... Give really me a face-down roll. Okay. D10, plus your cool, plus your reputation. Plus... Reputation. What's reputation? All right. What's reputation? Uh, your reputation is the number of adventures that you've completed. So I think it's going to be. A, I think it's a two. Oops. Yeah, Allison. Well, no, she. I think she's at a three now because I think I. Uh, I'm at a five. And okay. uh, Shannon would be at a four. Okay. So I roll that. With everything added together, I rolled a 10. <laughs> All right. I rolled an 8. So uh, you uh, win the face down. All of the actions that they take against you for the rest of this encounter, well, uh, forevermore until they defeat you, is going to be done at a two-point penalty. Uh, are Mo and Cavalry getting involved? In this, <clears throat> yeah, he'll he'll get out the door. He'll he'll open the door slowly okay. and just kind of step out. <laughs> All right, uh, Mo, I want you to make the same roll. You're going to roll a ten sider. You're going to roll add your cool. You don't have any reputation yet, but you do get that two point bonus from your uh, excellent fashion and grooming skill roll earlier. Nice. <laughs> And uh, Calvary's got a lot of reputation. He doesn't need any bonuses. 18. 18. Yeah, that beats an 8. <laughs> Calvary, what you got? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. All of the edge runners beat the boosters. Okay, that's going to put you guys at a significant advantage. Uh, Calvary told the Corpos uh, to hit the ground. Uh, they think that they're being robbed by the edge runners right now. <laughs> but they comply. And uh, the boosters are not backing down, however. So everybody roll initiative. Roll me a 10 cider, add your reflex. Nine. Ten. Okay. 17. 14. I'll write that down. 24. Nine for Mo. 14 for Cavalry. 24. Twenty-four. 
Holy smokes, 24? I for an initiative? I rolled a 10. It was really annoying. I rolled good on that stupid thing. And <laughs> <laughs> I hate rolling high on initiative. I'd rather just go later. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Allison, uh, roll for Greg. Roll for Greg? Roll for the insider, don't add anything. Six. He has no reflex. Okay, Greg is going on a six. Uh, the boosters rolled pretty well. Um, they beat Mo and Greg. Even with their penalty. But, uh, hey, Jinx, you're quickest on the draw. Uh, yeah, I'm going to You have an action that you want to declare now. I'm going to shoot one of their heads with a shotgun. I am having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have not determined range yet. So, do you want to be... So... Do you want to be shooting from your optimal range? Uh, yeah. No, okay. Optimal range uh, with a shotgun is within six yards. Uh, you're not that close. Uh, gotcha. You can be within 12 yards. Okay, so the DV is going to be a 15. Okay. Um, shotgun, I roll 5d6, it says. Is that right? No, you have to roll uh, a hit first, first. you're going to roll a 10-sider and add your uh, shoulder arm skill. Gotcha. Okay. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> it's been a while since I played. It was last year, the last time we played this. Yes. <laughs> 17. Okay, that is a hit. All right. Now roll your five exciters. Okay. Oh. Dramatic oh, pause. This must be a lot of pause. damage. No, I was adding in one of my dying on the floor. Uh, it's 12. Okay. <laughs> All right. 12 points. And, dude. Okay. So you definitely, yeah, mathematically, I know you did not hit multiple six siders. Yes. <laughs> that was a. A uh, good shot and a uh, lousy damage. It's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm not going to apply uh, the stopping power of his leather armor. So, uh, so he is... He didn't have a huge number of hit points, uh, but he is uh, severely injured now. So one of them, so uh, one of them uh, shouts in a language that you do not recognize, but probably uh, sounds uh, some like something very foul and involving your uh, lineage. And he drops to one knee. Hey, cavalry. You're yes. Up. All right. I am going to take aim at one of the others with my assault rifle. Ooh, okay. Uh, they're a little close for the assault rifle. At, you're looking at a DV-16. Seventeen. Hey, that's a hit. And I think that's another five D six weapon, isn't it? Yes, yes it is.
21 rolled three sixes. Three sixes. Three okay. Sixes. Uh, that means that I'm going to break out my tarot deck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrong deck. There we are. I that I means you are going to get. You are inflicted a, a grievous injury on this guy. <laughs> And if, yeah, this is something that I should have uh, prepped before the gang, but I'm almost there. Yeah, come on. There we go. Here we are. This is the arcana of my cyber, of my vaguely uh, cyberpunk themed deck. <laughs> nice. And I'm going to flip these over. And Jason, Jason. you tell me when to stop. That'll be your card. Stop. Okay, the card you pulled is Chariot. <laughs> and now I'm going to slow things down even more while I look up what, what the heck that means. <laughs> All yeah. right, give me 30 seconds. I have a couple of two texts, too, for playing, you know, games like this. And uh, my mom's like, why do you have tarot decks? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, because I'm play games <laughs> like, and someone come in there like can you read my cards and I'm like sure I like pulled out the little book <laughs> like <laughs> yeah how did it go poorly it went poorly <laughs> actually I read my brother was here too and I read my brother golden boys were all great and hers were all awful. <laughs> I should have just lied. It's just so the book says this. I don't know what they mean. I had to pull out the little book to read, you know. <laughs> you know, because it'd be like, you know, a golden, you know, you're gonna find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's gonna be great. And hers was like doom, doom, doom. Also <laughs> doom. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, just lie, just lie. And like, I'd open my mouth and I'd read from it. And I was like, why didn't I just lie? <laughs> like, they're cards. They're not real. Like, I just should have lied. I was, oh, no. You know, there is a positive interpretation to every possible hand being dealt by tarot. And I like the fact that you didn't sugarcoat it. You just... <laughs> No, she kept pulling upside down. You just down. gave him the bad interpretation straight away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it was just... I pull up in the book, and I'm like, oh, this means this. And she's like, does it mean this? And I'm like, no, no, I don't think so. I, mean, maybe... <laughs> I just pulled a no, skeleton pull with the scythe. Cards. What's that mean? I was, like, I was like, you know what? You know what? Let's try again. Let's go again. I'm, it'll be better the second time. It, it was... It, it, yeah. I'm not good. <laughs> okay, here's what here is what the chariot card does. The chariot offers the control required to strike true. Effect. The attack finds a fortuitous flaw in the target's armor, which forms a gaping hole. The victim's armor in the damaged location is ablated by an additional five points, even if it was not penetrated by the attack. Well, your attack did penetrate, and he was only wearing leather armor, which only had a four points of stopping power. So you completely destroyed his armor. And uh, you just, like, uh, hit it in uh, uh, the belt buckle that was holding the whole outfit together, and it falls off down around his ankles. <laughs> That's above and beyond the hit point damage. <laughs> How many hit points 
was that, Jason? It was a 21 that I rolled. 21, okay. Plus 5, because it was a critical hit, is 26, and he is dead. All right, the final boost. The uh, final booster is uh, not going to take this lying down. Uh, he, he is way too stoned to uh, understand that his situation is pointless. Um, on a roll of a one, he's going to go after Calvary. On a roll of two, it's going to be Jinx. On a roll of three, it's going to be Mo. A roll of four, it's going to be Greg. And on a five or six, he's going to go after one of the corpos. I rolled a six. So he takes a swing at one of the corpos, who is not evading. And yeah, he scores a critical hit, too. Mm. So, uh, Allison, will you please roll me two six-siders? Five. Five. All right. One of these corpos has a broken rib now. So he walked up with, so he ran up with a tire iron, uh, a rushing, uh, attempting to rush the limo. And along the way, he swung down at one of these uh, prone corpos who was, uh, 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 in kind of a kneeling position on all four, and just went, crack. But uh, hey, it's Mo's turn. <clears throat> Mo kind of just like saunters out from like behind the door and grabs his bass from inside, mm -hmm. and just starts playing like a a, a killer bass line, and he's going to use his charismatic <laughs> impact. Okay, uh, here's how Charismatic Impact works. Uh, first, we determine if there are any fans in the group. This is a large group, so it's going to be a DV of 12. Um, now, we're going to count, even though there are a lot of corpos here, we're going to count this as a uh, medium group because it uh, we just are. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the mathematics of it right now. Uh, so roll me a 10-sider, add your four points of charismatic impact, and you're trying to beat a DV-10. Doesn't have two extra points? So 14. For the cleaning? Thank you for reminding me, Allison. Yes. Okay. That's a 14. So, uh, as, a so as a result, uh, yes. Uh, one of the cor uh, one of the uh, one of the corpos uh, stands back up and says, "Hey, I recognize that base. You're from God Slay the Queen." <laughs> and he just keeps playing. And all of the corpos now, all of the corpos look up. They're like, "Oh." Ooh. <laughs> and uh, the guy who just pointed, uh, he also gets whacked with the tire iron right across the jaw. Ooh. Well, not the same tire iron. But uh, that is not a critical hit. But it is enough to knock him cold. And that's what, and we'll say that is uh, because the first booster already went this turn, that's what the second booster, uh, the one who was shot by Jinx, just did. Okay, now uh, we have determined that you've got a that you've got fans here. Are you uh, going to attempt to tell them to do something for you? Yeah, take them down, mates. <laughs> Take them down, mates. Uh, yeah, that works. <laughs> Against a small group. You can convince a group of up to six fans to regularly hang out with the rocker boy, 
provide booze, drugs, or other party favors to the rocker boy. And since uh, they themselves are being threatened, I'm going to say it's not much of a uh, stretch to say that they're going to fight upon command. Roll me your charismatic impact again. Uh, your DV is, again, a 10. Eleven. Eleven. By the skin of your teeth. <laughs> Adequate enough. Uh, the corpos, who have not uh, done anything this turn, uh, but there are seven of them who are uninjured, uh, grab and, and pull the uh, one standing booster down. And begin lynch mobbing him. Uh, which brings us back to Jinx. Um, the wounded, the guy that you shot last time is still alive, barely. <laughs> if if you wanted, to, uh, if you wanted to try to scare him away again or finish him off, now would be the time to do it. Okay. Um. Is, do we know what, like, would would it be useful to know why they were trying to attack Corpos, or is it just like a gangish type weird thing? It would not be unprecedented to have random muggings uh, on the street. Okay. Not um, even in Las Vegas. Yeah, I'm going to try for the final blow thing. Just take them out. Okay. Coup de gras. <laughs> what am I? All right, uh, your DV is going to be. Yeah, your D. Actually, uh, your. Uh, you can uh, slide out of the limo and step forward so that you're with, and then you would be within your optimal range. Now, so you can roll a DV thirteen if you wanted. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll do that. And then, uh, so it's shoulder arms plus my roll, which is uh, 16. That's adequate. Roll that 5d10. Roll that 5d6 again, please. Okay. And roll better than an 8. <laughs> <laughs> so. Twenty-two and one six. I rolled so. Okay. One six doesn't matter because uh, the twenty-two is more than adequate to uh, kill him off. Uh, please describe how. You <laughs> please describe uh, what it looks like when you execute this strung out I booster. Straight. I go straight for like a headshot. And just put it up to his skull, and it just flies everywhere, but not <laughs> me because the force like shoved it out everywhere. So there are there's brain matter and bone and everything just splattering out across everything else within the range except for where I'm standing. Um, and uh, then you know <laughs> the body kind of falls down. Um. And uh, I the probably... corpos in their bloody business suits uh, raise their bloody fists to the sky and uh, cheer Jinx and uh, like, yeah, good shot, blew his head clean off. All right, <laughs> thank you. Thank hey, you. Mo, your roadie is awesome. I'm not the roadie. <laughs> I, I also start grabbing all their tire irons and whatever I can grab from the corpses. <laughs> okay, uh, there will be a list of loot, but before that happens, um, corporate sec corpo security, a uh, car full of rent a cops, uh, comes to a screeching halt beside you, and uh, the corpos uh, just raise a bloody. Uh, thumbs up and say, we're cool! 
<laughs> Even the two guys that uh, okay. got a broken rib and uh, knocked, knocked out cold. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, those two corpos and another two who helps uh, carry them are going to uh, go are going to get in the back of this poli- uh, rent a cop cruiser, and they're going and they're going to say, uh, "Back into the medical clinic, back to Doc Ramas. We're going back inside, right back where we came from." Hey, can we? Uh... Tag along. They peel out and take off. <laughs> I go back to looting. <laughs> so the other five is like, um, so do you guys need a uh, we were actually going to be escorting Mo uh to 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 that exact same clinic. Um you wanna Didn't come they with all jump into the car? Like all the corpse people? I think it's a great no, idea. No, there, there were there were nine corpos. They're not all going to fit into the back seat. Gotcha. We're not doing the clown car thing. So uh, four of them got into the car, and uh-huh. that left uh, five of them with you with you guys. Gotcha. Okay. And the bodies of three boosters on the on the ground. There are dumps Which, again, nearby. I'm looting. <laughs> I'm just like. Getting a tire iron, throwing it in the car, getting another tire iron, throwing it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got more than just tire irons. But uh, I'll I'll get you a full I'll get you a full uh list of loot uh li- a little bit later. Gotcha. Um yeah, they've got uh they've got agents. Um uh they've got a little bit of cybernetics, not much. Uh uh, one of them has uh, impact, a uh, fully intact uh, suit of leather armor, which is on the ground around his ankles. Gotcha. That might be good for Mo. So there's leather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a few. <laughs> they have a few eddies. Um, yeah, they don't wear it as well as Greg does. All right, and I'm assuming Calvary is talking to the corpses, so. <laughs> the corpses? Uh, to answer your question, Jason, uh, if you spend a luck point, then yes, there is a dumpster nearby. All right. I'll spend that luck point. Okay. Then I'll start dragging All right, the bodies and... over there. Then dumping them. Uh, Mo, you are being now uh, surrounded by five fanboys and fangirls. (laughs) And uh, yeah, one is non binary. So two fanboys, two fangirls, one other. Oh, like, like, get your autographs in a second. Let's just get this finished up and let's get. uh, I I got some medical shit I gotta do. So you don't want to come with me. Ta-ta. Wow, Mo, your accent is the coolest. Isn't that great? I've been working on my uh, past 20 years. Wait, no. Mo, do you know Ultimate Sparkles? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, mm. Guys? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I would yeah. never hang out with that. that I know cow. Ultimate Sparkles. I know Ultimate Sparkers. No, you I don't. Know you're talking about Ultimate no. Sparkles. No, you know Ultimate Sprinkles. Yeah, that one. (laughs) Yeah, uh, they're completely ignoring Jinx right now. (laughs) They're focusing solely on Mo. No, why you ask? Why why do you think I would hang out with somebody like that? Just say yes. Just Just say no. Just say yes, you know. (laughs) Hey, Mo, have you always played the bass? Always. All right. Yeah, no, when I was a little kid, I used to play the violin, but then, then I got all cool and shit, and then I started playing the, the bass. <laughs> okay, uh, this is going to go on for however long that Mo can tolerate it. <laughs> Mo can tolerate it a long time. It's admiration. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
Well, uh, in that case, uh, we're not going to role play the whole thing. Uh, we've been going on for a while, and uh, the actual infiltration we could save for the next game session. Sweet. Sound, sound good? All right. Cool. Yeah, that'll give you a little more time to strategize about uh, how you want to, about how exactly you want to approach this. And I did have uh, uh, a map pulled up. But I might choose a different one, so it'll give me a so it'll give me a little prep time. Oh, and that's all I've got. Cool, that was fun. Hey. Sweet. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, Nick. Yeah. Hopefully, I can do more. It, it, it was Brad. It was. Good to finally drag you kicking and screaming into the dark future. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I just gotta go watch some Blade Runner and get back into character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have uh, 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 any news that we want to impart before we sign off? Um, yeah, we got a. I have a second group that I'm playing Call of Cthulhu with. And it's going to be called Dead Letters because um, they're playing 1920s postal employees uh, getting <laughs> caught up in like a Cthulhu kind of mystery. Um, be pretty fun. Oh, that's coming out pretty soon. Um, we also have our five year what the f anniversary coming up that we need to all schedule and try to be part of it. It's, it's kind of hard because now we're all kind of scattered. Shannon's on Twitch, and we're over here, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> so, I think Arn wants to be a part of it, and yeah, I'm going to try to bring the other group in. So that's another problem because they work nights. <laughs> so, yeah, trying to get everybody together is going to be kind of a mess, but it should be fun. Cool. Otherwise, uh, just a standard cluster, like it usually. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for that three hours trying to get through a door campaign. <laughs> we don't like doors. Well, yeah, my schedule is uh, all up in the air right now. Um, it looks like I'm going to, going forward, I'm going to be going into work uh, earlier on Saturday. So we're going to have to have a conversation about when we're picking this up again next time. Uh, that's all I. That's all I got. Uh, is Shannon uh, available to, uh, to cue the sign off? I am here. So thank you so much, everybody. Yay. I hope everyone have a, has a beautiful weekend, and we will see you next time. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Bye.